Hello dear friends, uh, welcome to my studio in Montreal. I'm really happy to hold this online broadcasting again because you know I'm just one day ago I'm back after my big trip around the world. It was a lot of countries. It was Australia, China, France, uh, Portugal, Spain. So it was a huge trip, uh, more than three months. So I'm really happy to be in my studio again with my family, so that's good. And uh, all my memory about my trip still very fresh, you know, just one day. So that's why today we're back to one of the countries that I was before. And we talk about that. And uh, by the way, uh, today, uh, in, in case if you want to follow me, today I use the, uh, not my uh, regular paper, uh, it's not the Sanders this time, not Arches. I use the Bao Hong Master Choice. You know, I was in China. I just was really lucky to be in China on the Bao Hong factory. So I saw how they made paper and uh, I saw a lot of uh, prototypes and experiments and the uh, idea how they create that paper. It's something completely new and different. And uh, uh, for now, it's my favorite paper, uh, and I like the name, you know. It's not like a regular Bao Hong, it's Bao Hong Master Choice. Because I talk with a, a, a lot of artists who are using this paper now, including the Joseph's book, which for instance, uh, it's really, really nice paper. So it's different. And you have to rebuild your feeling about the paper. So if you want to follow me, uh, and something you will see like something unusual happens, you should know it's just because of the Bao Hong Master Choice. This is a rough 300 grams. And the colors as usual, we have a limited numbers of colors. I use just a small palette, I'm a lazy guy, and regular brushes, so nothing special. Uh, and you know, it was a huge uh, trip this year, really, really big. By, by the way, it's my fault. Uh, if you have any questions, you just can tape it in the chat. I can hear your questions and we can communicate wherever you want about everything, all my experience at your service. So as I said, it was a huge trip. Just imagine uh, this year, uh, it was uh, 17 countries, 29 workshops around the world. So that was really, really good and busy. But it was uh, so interesting for me to see the different culture, different people, different country, and that was cool. So for all the people uh, who missed that and wasn't with me and couldn't be with me, uh, before the end of this year, uh, in a sketching academy, uh, we hold the two Zoom workshops. So if you still uh, want to to talk and follow me, but couldn't go if physically, you can join to the Zoom. The next one will be in no November uh, 4, uh, it will be about Girona. You know, I, I was in Girona just five days ago in Spain. Beautiful city, like you are inside the Game of Thrones. It's, it's really old, very nice. And the streets, very narrow, just like that. And you know, it was a very interesting to paint the plein air here because you couldn't just make like a beautiful view in the city. It's always like that. And a lot of students uh, will feel lost because how to explain that on your paper? So the next workshop, uh, what will be in the Sketching Academy will be exactly about that narrow street. So how to explain in your paper uh, that space and make it look cool. And the second one uh, will be about in December. You will find all the information in the chat uh, in our uh, YouTube channel. It will be about the fog and mist in the city. That was a, a few more surprises in my trips. You know, it's very easy to paint the city in the sunny day. It's not a big deal. You know, the light, the shadow, nice details, it's done. But the mist, uh, it's, it's really a challenge. Uh, first of all, it's really like a mysterious feeling, uh, like unusual stuff. And how to make the selection, make the right details, explain the distance in the fog and the mist. It's, it's really, really cool job. So we'll do that uh, together on the Zoom workshop in December. 
and uh, today <coughs> we go into the Portugal I believe you saw the few videos what I took here uh, by the way next year uh, in the end of the year 2024 I back to Portugal for the two workshops three workshops and uh, the last time uh, last one was in that beautiful place look look at that look it's just wow and the rocks uh, uh, Portimao it was a uh, end of the uh, if you look at the map it will be end of the uh, of the Portugal Portimao so nice the ocean not cold so you can swim if you want uh, the smell from the ocean is just only in Portugal like that and the view was amazing uh, so uh, you know today the morning uh, for now in Montreal uh, <clears throat> nine o'clock so today at the morning I opened the uh, door on my studio and it was a snow so I back to the winter the snow was everywhere the first first day of the snow so that's why uh, the plan was different but then I saw the snow I say I want to back to Portugal to the sunny day to the ocean so I invite you to be with me together there so this is our reference photo no worries I put it on the screen uh, you will see it in all the process and as usual any questions just ask me so let's go you see that's uh, this is our picture reference photo it's always here and this is the I, I know it's not the landscape uh, I uh, I choose the square format of the paper because that's uh, make the process a little bit more flexible and uh yeah we started from the sketch you see it's just empty paper i need a sketch and that should be simple that's it i just need to know where is my horizon line now let's go to paint Uh, for the sky uh, because you know I want to be in summer this is the combination between cobalt uh, and tallow blue green shade colors and you know the texture of the Bauhonk rough master choice paper is just amazing I believe you see that it's so nice textured paper Hello Germany, welcome to join me today, thank you. Uh, you see, uh, I use the negative space to build my rock here because I want to make the rock, you can see that on the picture, uh, somewhere it's uh, lighter than the uh, than the sky somewhere darker i want to make it lighter because i want to see the sunlight after the snow on my balcony i want to back to the summer okay so we continue to paint and another one small rock here hello Florida I believe you don't have a snow right <laughs> lucky you I just want to add a little bit more bluish colors in my sky a little bit more summer hello Francois 
So now it's mostly the combination between uh, phthalo green, uh, phthalo blue and cobalt. I'm starting to make my waves. To make it uh, more uh, softly, a little bit uh, queen sienna, maybe indigo inside. So that's the same colors, just the five colors, but always in the different proportions. Hello, Italy. Welcome. Yes, uh, it's uh, yeah. I, I hear your question about the difference between the Saunders Waterford and uh, Bauhaus Master Choice paper. Oh yes, it's just uh, two completely different papers. You know the Saunders, uh, uh, the Bauhaus Master Choice. Just remember Bauhaus and the Bauhaus Master Choice. It's a uh, two different papers. So the Bauhaus uh, Master Choice hold water extremely long. So no rush, you can paint very slowly and you have a chance to combine everything together. Uh, th that's incredible. No one paper hold the uh, uh, water that long. So it was a huge surprise for me. Then I'm starting to use it the first time. And it's definitely great paper. Well, for sure it's a professional 100% cotton and all the things, but how that hold the, the water, that's something really, really incredible. And, and plus the texture of the paper, you can see that, uh, you know, I just softly touching that and you see the dry brush strokes coming in itself very natural way. And it's not, you see, it's not drying. So I can back to that blended by water. That's truly incredible paper. And we have a 50 people. Thank you very much for joining me today. And if you don't mind, uh, please like the video because it helps other people to find it. Uh, I know that it's like a game, but that uh, help other people. So if you don't mind, if you really like it for sure. Hello, Taiwan. Welcome, Netherlands. You see that was a dry brush strokes and for now just a little bit water and I can softly blend it and make nice gradients. And wash out, you see it perfectly works with the wash out as well. That's why it's like a brilliant, brilliant paper. A little bit colors inside. Uh, hello for uh, people who for now on Instagram, you can join to my demo on YouTube in the lifetime right now. So if you have a chance, join me. Okay, I, I hear the question about how I organize the colors in my studio palette. You know, it's very simple. Uh, just following the rainbow. It's exactly the rainbow, starting from the yellow, uh, going to the red, green, blue, and the dark colors. Uh, idea is, first of all, it's the best uh, way to organize. Second one, you know, that's uh, similar colors. Uh, for instance, if then you pick up the pigments and mix them together, this is the Indian yellow, for example. This is a quinacridone deep gold. If you uh, just, in case, to make a mistake, pick up not this one, that one, it not will be a huge difference because they are similar. Uh, if it will be something like a blue here, you'll be in trouble. That's why the similar colors should be normally together. But thank you for the question. It's a good question. That's the right question.
Uh, UK, thank you for joining me. Hello. I changed the composition of the original photo a little bit, uh, just because I want to make it a little bit different. So, uh, and it's an interesting game started now. I'm preparing my waves. Uh, you see, the ocean is still not here because it's a negative space for my waves. What I'm starting to do, this part, the ground. Mostly it will be a cobalt because we have a very nice reflection here. And Queen Sienna, uh, that two guys give me the very nice grayish mix. Uh, thank you very much, Lenny, for your kind words. I really appreciate it. Thank you, really. And you see, I don't have a rock here, but I'm starting to make reflection from my rock. The rock we will do later. See, it's really an incredible soft blending on the rough paper. That's so cool. Really, really nice. So, uh, you know, it's it's really great feeling. I'm just paint the, painting the ocean right now. And just two meters behind me in my studio on the balcony, I have a snow. So that's the great point to back in memory. And uh, for the holy people, uh, in the beginning, for people who miss uh, the beginning of the course, I say this year it was a crazy travel, 17 countries, and it was a lot of workshops. And for the whole the people who miss them but still want to join me, uh, we have a two last online Zoom workshops this year. So you will find all the information in our group chat. Uh, if you have a chance, join me, because that will be really interesting. We will talk about the two unusual subjects. Yeah, and you know, I want to make it a little bit more bright compared to the photo, because I want to be in summer. <laughs> in my painting, I can do that. Hello, Singapore, welcome. Uh, I see the great question, what I should do first, next. Uh, you know, yes, we have uh, some rules. Um, normally it's more intuitive, for sure. Uh, it's just, I feel that, or I feel this, but we have a few golden rules about the watercolor. We always painting from top to bottom because the water moving in that direction. And the second, uh, we are normally we painting from light to shadow because it's very easy to make your objects darker. It's still kind of complicated to possible, but complicated to make it lighter. So that's the rules what I'm using normally. From top to bottom and from light to shadow. Thank you for the question. Yes, as I say, the uh, regular Baohong, uh, the Baohong, like the other company, make a lot of different papers. And uh, professional Baohong, 100% cotton, uh, artistic paper, not the same like a master choice. The master choice, it's a different recipe. It's, it's like top of the top. It's like a cream. So it's a definitely different paper. If you will try that, you will be very surprised. It's really, really nice. And you will feel a difference, I'm sure. 
and for people who are now on the Facebook, uh, you can uh, join me on the YouTube channel in the live video right now, and I will be happy to see you. You can ask me the question, which is impossible to that short recording on the Facebook. So let's go to the YouTube. Yeah, thank you for the question. Yes, I will be in United Kingdom uh, for the festival. Uh, all the information on my website you'll find there. I hold a, a workshop here, if I'm right, it should be two workshops, uh, about the dancing people, uh, my favorite subject. And it will be very interesting. It's a huge, nice event. So I'm really excited to go in there. Yes, uh, I, I see that question. Yep, this time my paper still wet on the back because you know, then I'm, I'm painting. Sometimes I make a stop just to talk with you or something. But surprise is for the Bao Hong paper, you don't have to wet the backside as I'm usually doing because that paper hold water incredibly long. As I say, it's enough if you just wet it on the front or just starting to paint. So. That's why I say, for my feelings, like a revolution in the paper. It's it's really, really great. But this time, yep, I wet it just to feel more comfortable because in that case, you know, I can stop any time and talk with you. And that's important for me. Hello, Sweden. Hello, New York. You know, I, I really like that feeling what I can back to the each part of my painting any time. And my pigments, you see, still unstable. I can make the correction and that's it's gorgeous. Uh, I got the question, uh, you know, uh, there is not that strong rules. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, uh, I prefer to paint the, only the light, make it dry, and after that apply another one layer uh, with the shadows. It's normal way. Sometimes, like I do now, uh, I prefer to paint everything together in one moment. You know, the reason is, in that case, I can blend all the things together. So that's what I like. I can connect it right now. And I like that. That's why I'm doing this. So it's make it more fresh and more spontaneous and more nice. Especially because you see that that paper give me a chance to do that. Uh, it's not drying that fast. And I like the texture, you see, it's good. Yep. Hello, Istanbul. Hello, Finland. Thank you for joining me today. See, with my big brush for now I create the big shapes and after that I switch to the calligraphy brush to add the nice details there. And for sure we still have to paint the ocean. That's why I choose that picture. I want to be on the vacation.
You see that dry brush strokes here are just truly amazing. And you see it's kind of unusual way uh, I'm painting from the shadow to the light this time. So I uh, apply the pigments and for now I use just a clear brush to connect it to the white paper and still make some dry brush texture. Good solution. So now I switch to the calligraphy brush to add some nice details and the contrast for sure. Uh, yeah, okay, I got the question. Uh, you know, personally, I, I prefer not paint wet on wet in the portraits at all. Uh, I prefer to paint on the dry paper uh, with uh, some water inside, uh, which gives me just more time. <clears throat> I like the dry brush strokes. So the wet on wet for the portraits, it's not my favorite technique. But thank you for the question. Just look at the texture, it's something really, really cool. And you see, I, I make it like maybe 10 minutes ago and it's still wet. That's why I have a chance somewhere to add more pigments and it's gonna blend itself and make a very nice contrast. Thank you for the greeting from Marley. Uh, yes, I will be in France. Thank you for your kind words. Yep. I look forward to that trip because I hear a lot of great things about that festival and it will be a pleasure to be there. Uh, you asking about that brush? Yes, that's the new one. Uh, it's very similar to the brush what I'm using regular uh, regular way. Uh, this is just a prototype. I'm starting to test that because I want to make some uh, changes in the construction com compared to my regular one. I believe in the few, uh, maybe five weeks or something, it will be available on my website. Uh, we will talk about that brush later. You know, this is the full wood, so it's not separated parts. Uh, it's really a nice hard wood and full. And perfectly balance it. That's what I like that. In the different size, it's uh, bigger, you know, the smaller one. That's what I miss. Uh, that's why we created. I miss the smaller brush to make the nice details like I'm doing now. So that's good too, but not available for now. A little bit later. Patience. So I'm starting to create my ocean. Uh, everything is wet here, but uh, I grate. Uh, I'm okay with that. I like to make the connection. So that's good. I'm, I will try to combine everything together. And uh, you see by fingers I build the shape of the brush to make the waves look nice here. Hello, Japan.
and we go into that side a little bit more greenish and the same trick so you see I use the texture of the of the hair of this brush and the shape to make negative space for my waves it works perfectly And even there, I combine that to my rock. It's just one big shape. Just to make it more real, a little bit wash out. Yeah, the paper is still wet uh, on the back, definitely, and uh, it's kind of still wet on front. I couldn't touch, uh, save my paper. It's still kind of, uh, you know, to show you how it works, uh, just like an experiment, uh, I will add some more pigments on top of the sky. The sky is almost stable, but still can be controlled. I just finished my waves. I add a little bit more windy, smooth blending here. Let's make it more natural. I like that splash. Hello Strasbourg! <clears throat> so we have a 19 people. Uh, thank you for joining me today in the Monday. You know, for me, you create a great start for the week and I really enjoy uh, your questions and this conversation. Thank you very much. If you don't mind, uh, put the like because that helps to other people to find that video on the YouTube. You see, I add a little bit uh, clouds now. Uh, the, the paper here, pretty stable and dry, but uh, idea is it's so wet inside. That's why I can blend everything what I'm doing uh, easily. And that's really, really cool. So you see, we can add some clouds and keep it under control. Still, this, everything is wet here inside a lot of water. And, but on top, pigment's pretty stable. That's why you see I make, I can make a connection between everything and play with that as long as I need. You see, we just add something and it's softly blended. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> uh, it's not necessary for sure to make that uh, clouds here, but you see, I created like a negative space and I want to show you what you can back to your paper even if the first layer is dry inside is full of water that's why it's easy to do including the washout hello tennessee and one part what i'm really like uh, and it's <clears throat> Uh, it's very, it was very visible when I was in Portugal in Rio in that place, you know, just a, just one week ago or something like that. Incredible. So uh, this is the you can see it on the photo right here. It's a lot of 
plants here from the ocean because the water moving everywhere and that's make that place very recognizable so I want to add it and for this I will use the trick so I use the wet brush make some shapes everywhere because it's everywhere but it's not you see it's not dark uh, after that I blend it somewhere it, it have to be part of my picture Yeah, thank you for the question. Exactly. Uh, uh, you see, I tape, I wet back side of my tape, uh, my paper. I tape it on the perimeter. It's here. That's why my paper is flat and very comfortable. And I will keep it definitely flat like that till it will be completely dry. After that, if I remove the tape, my paper will be flat absolutely. <laughs> uh, good question. By the way, uh, the competition, step-by-step uh, -step competition, thank you for the question, uh, will start soon. You know, I just back to uh, to my studio in Montreal. I have to record you that first. For sure, I will do that. Talking about the subject, you tell me what subject you prefer. Let's make a void. Uh, for people who don't know what is the step-by-step -step competition, you can go to my website, watercolorline.com. Uh, you will find in the menu, step-by-step. So times to times we make the competition uh, exactly with the prices. And for the people who know what is that, tell me, what's the subject you prefer for the next time? You decide. Any ideas, just type it in the chat. You know, it's really cool. For now, you have a chance to decide what to do next. Any ideas? I will be happy. Really appreciate your support. Another ballerina? Okay. By the way, for people who are looking for the ballerina, uh, you can join me. On the workshop in in Great Britain, it will be a very very special workshop. Not just about the ballerina. We will talk about the dancing people, which is a really complicated and unusual object subject. And I will show you the tricks how to do that. It should be very cool. So if you have a chance, join me there. And that's an interesting idea to repeat the same thing another one time. Yep, we can do that. No, uh, I, I hear the question about the, the paper. Yes, definitely I wet the back. But the front, only in case if I want to paint wet on wet. This time, no, you see the dry brush strokes everywhere. To be able to do that, uh, my paper has to be dry on front. So that's the reason why I do not make the wet the front side, just the back. That's just the last touching. Uh, you know, uh, after we finish it, uh, this uh, broadcasting, uh, I will check all your answers about the next idea for the step-by-step. -step. I, I really want to say thank you for uh, support and you will find the time to, to show me that. It's interesting. I will follow in your advice. And maybe we start a new voting because it's interesting if you decide what to do. I really like that idea. Oh, uh, I know on the photo it's much more, uh, but first of all, I believe that's enough. Uh, all that small things. What I do want to put here a birds. Uh, if, I don't know, if, if, I'm not sure what you see on the photo. But here we have a birds and it's I remember how it was. They're just sitting there and watching the on the ocean. It was 
<laughs> very nice things so I add some birds there Okay, thank you for ideas, the musician, it's it's really, really nice. Uh, I like that subject very much, so that will be cool. Yep, I agree, good idea. Any other ideas, just write it down in the chat. So in the end, I just, you know, have to sign it because I'm responsible for everything what I'm doing as usual. So it's done. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to, uh, you know, then I'm painting this, uh, my memory back to the Portugal. And it's truly a pleasure to uh, remember how it was. Special because, as I say, for now I have a... It's the snow is everywhere, so the winter is coming. I'm living in Canada, six months I will see the snow, but no, honestly not six months because uh, my next trip starting in February next year, so I have a three month to be in my studio only, and after that the full year non-stop again traveling around the world, this time it will, it will be 21 country, uh, even more, and uh, 32 workshops around the world all the uh, list of the workshops on my website some of them already full booked uh, some of them still have uh, places and uh, if you couldn't travel with me again this year uh, in the uh, november uh, 4th and uh, december you can check the dates on my website i hold the two zoom workshops in the sketching academy project if you have a chance, join me and special because the subject really, really interesting. So thank you, uh, thank you for that trip to sunny Portugal to the summer with me. I really appreciate it and appreciate your questions. If you uh, want to know more, just feel free to uh, send me the message or tape your question right in the uh, after the video in our chat. I will be happy to answer. Thank you very much, stay healthy, and see you next Monday. Bye-bye.